Hi Rocketeers and welcome back to my shop. This is my Tormach 1100MX mill. I've been using it for the last couple of years as an essential part of how I build rockets here in the shop. One of the quirks of the Tormach 1100MX is that the coolant system has to get fished through a really tiny hole in the back of the mill every time I try and change the coolant. And my hands are skinny, but it's not a lot of fun. So today we're going to do something about that. Alright folks, here's the deal. This is the coolant assembly for the Tormach 1100MX. And I have to pull it out of the machine to top up the coolant with additional water as the water that is in the coolant evaporates, dries out, gets carried away by the coolant. And you need to at the same time check the ratio of oil to water and make sure that's correct as well. The problem is, is that um, I have to take this over to another corner of my workshop in order to do that. Um, because that's where the water is. So I have to take the whole thing all the way out. There is this uh, flexible compliant cable lets you pull it some of the way out without um, uh, needing to do this, but uh, unfortunately that doesn't work for me. So my plan is I'm going to use some of this PVC pipe to build a rigid assembly that sticks out of that port in the back of the machine, and then I'll be able to tie the electrical cables off to that assembly so that everything gets pulled through the machine uh, when I slide this back in uh, to the machine and I don't have to fish anything through that tiny port, it'll all just come out on its own and I can connect it on the back side of the machine. Assembling the new coolant line is really straightforward. First up, there's a half inch NPT to schedule 40 adapter that threads in with Teflon tape to the pump. This then gets a right angle elbow fitting. Next, I add a push to connect barb to another Schedule 40 PVC NPT fitting. PVC primer and glue connect the 8 inch section and the 2 foot section to another right angle elbow. This goes into the right angle elbow we installed earlier. While the glue is still soft, I do a quick fit check to make sure that the angle is correct. Finally, I zip tie the cords for the tramp oil skimmer and the coolant pump to the rigid pipe assembly to allow them to fish through the hole at the same time I push the coolant assembly into place. A quick test of the coolant pump shows that everything's working perfectly. With the upgrades complete, it's now a lot easier to surface the coolant on this machine. Pulling the sump out and removing the chip screen lets me access the coolant. Then I use a tool known as a refractometer to check the amount of oil in the coolant. This footage is fairly awful, but the coolant was at a brix of about 6, so we need to add about 1 to 10 oil to water when we top up the 5 gallons of coolant to get an 8% mixture. I'm going to top up the coolant using a deionized water generator that I built in my shop. This generator feeds a 10 gallon tank which recirculates through another set of resin media. A total dissolved solids meter lets me check the progress of cleaning the water, and once it's done, I can use the water from the reservoir to fill the coolant sump. It's important to use DI water here because the evaporation is so severe at 7500 feet where my house is that the coolant would accumulate minerals from the hard water over progressive top ups. But with a little stirring, the coolant is all topped up and ready for a test run. The part we're going to machine is an oxidizer dome for a rocket engine I'm working on. It's machined in three operations from 6061 aluminum, and I've designed it in Onshape. I've been using SolidWorks since 2018 and NX before that, but I've been pretty happy with Onshape's ability to handle these models for this project. I then import the models into Fusion 360 to write the cam. The first op is going to rough most of the stock out of this billet using a 2 insert 3 quarter inch shear hog. The material is held in a mod vise from Saunders Machine Works. I'm running the shear hog at 30 inches per minute at 6500 RPM with a 2 tons optimal load and a quarter inch step down for this adaptive clear. Once the adaptive clear is finished, I face the top surface and then change to a 8 inch end mill to clean up the bolt flats on the flange. Once the flange is cleaned up, I use a quarter inch ball nose end mill to tidy up the fillets around the edge, and then I do a chamfer pass. 
The bolts on this top face are where I attach the gimbaled thrust interface to this injector. A quick spot drill followed by a number 35 drill bit set us up to do some rigid tapping. This is actually my first time rigid tapping ever with my mill, so I was a little nervous. My next part is going to be an Inconel injector plate with some 256 formed threads, uh, so I'm trying to get some experience with a slightly more forgiving setup. But all the stressing turned out to be for nothing, as the rigid tapping worked perfectly on the first try. With those holes tapped, I swapped out the mod vise for the Tormach speed vise and flipped the part to do OP2. OP2 is starting with a quick 3D adaptive clear, once again using the shear hog, and then a facing operation to get the part mostly to final size. A 3 8 inch end mill then clears out this central pocket, which is the plenum, that feeds the injector with oxidizer. And then we're back to the 1 8 inch end mill to clean up the bolt cutouts on the corners to final size. Yeah. The chamfer on the bottom completes the bolt flange. Be a very fast we're back to doing holes as we have six bolt holes to get drilled. Here I'm using a trace contour to carefully control the position for a high temperature seal gland for the igniter pass through. I'm slotting here with a 1 8 inch end mill, so it's a bit exciting. Um, I'm running it at 8,000 RPM at 20 inches per minute, but it worked fine. And then I finished that igniter port up with a drilled and reamed hole for a stainless steel tube liner to get press fit in. With that finished, the last thing to do is to flip it for operation 3 to actually drill the side port for the igniter. The igniter port starts with a quick facing operation just to clean up the surface finish on this edge here and take it to final size. Then I use a helical profile to bore out a hole, which is then going to get tapped for half inch NPT. With all that machining done, I think it's safe to say that the coolant system improvements on the mill work great, and they make the sump a lot easier to use. Here's a couple beauty shots of the oxidizer dome as it's complete, uh, with just a little bit of dried coolant left on it, and I think this part is ready to roll.